distance a forger fence on, Dad. 200 miles. And another 300 is being put in. Someday it'll run all the way from California to the Gulf of Mexico. It's ruined! Hi, Bullet! Oh, Pancho, Lopez. Roy. Say, what's the Mexican patrol doing on the United States side of the border? Well, we were just going over to your camp to see if you'd heard from Colonel Wells. Yes, I just got a telegram from him. I was on my way to see you. As per your request, this office and Mexican officials agree to the transfer of Lopez to work with you and the American patrol until further notice. He will proceed and report to headquarters at Barrasco. I'm on my way to report to the colonel at Capital City immediately. Hey, Dad! Bear tracks! Not even an hour old! How do you know that? Dad says that when the wind is blowing easy, like it is today, the sharp edges of the tracks are smoothed out in about an hour's time. And these edges are still sharp. Well, you're getting to be a chip off the old block. Now, if you were a border patrolman, what would you do in a case like this? I wouldn't bother to track him down. He hasn't crossed the fence. Well, Pancho, I guess you're not ready to be put on the payroll yet. See this hair? It came off of that same bear when it climbed the fence from Mexico. Pancho, it shows you've got to keep your eyes open. If any animal crosses this fence without either the Mexican or the American patrol catching, killing, and burning it, it's liable to cause the spread of hoof and mouth disease. Well, let's go get him. Wait a minute. You stay here. All right, Bullet. Come on, boy. Let's go get him. He's picked up the trail. seems to be doubling back towards the border. He'll probably go back across the fence the same place he came in. Pancho! He seems to be okay. Roy, these scratches don't look very good. I have a first aid kit in my saddlebag. I better take him to Capital City with me and have the doc take a look at him. Gee, maybe I didn't get one of those American cowboy suits. Looks like you'll need it. Lopez, you ride on to our camp just outside of Barrasco. I'll meet you there as soon as I talk to Colonel Wells. We'll ship Trigger and Bullet by freight. What about my mule, Roy? We'll ship him, too. out just perfect for us. The minute that wind came up, I started the trucks rolling. I had the herd moving at the first breeze. 
How much did you get that last herd? 20 grand. I've already taken my cut. How much you pay for this batch? $30 a head. $30? I get $300 a head over on my side. That's a thousand percent profit. This sounds too good to last. Last just as long as you change my lazy C into your brand, the Big Circle. I hope so. Starting to spill over. You know, something has come up, though, that may make it a little tough to run the next bunch across. What's that? Yeah, some of the ranches along the border are scared stiff the hoof and mouth disease is going to get into their herds. You know, there's some of it reported over on your side of the fence a couple of weeks ago. I know. I had to destroy a few myself. They're having a big meeting about that in Capital City tomorrow. Plan to be there, I hope. I'll be there. And I'll try and keep them from taking any action that might affect us. When do you think you'll get back to Brasco? Should be day after tomorrow on the bus. I'll meet you there. I gotta know what happened at that meeting. I wouldn't take a chance on crossing the border. Somebody might recognize Jim Bradford as Lucky Grillo. Uh, maybe you're right. I'll send Tony. This cattle deal's better than the old rackets. I make more for myself than I did on the numbers and the slot machines put together before they ran me out of the country. <laughs> we'll make a fortune every time there's a sandstorm. <laughs> That's it. Come on. Lopez of the Border Patrol. Now turn around and run all those cattle back into Mexico. And I'm taking you all into Borrasco. I'd like you to meet these men. They represent the various cattlemen's associations along the border. And I don't mind telling you that between your journal and these gentlemen, I'm in a pretty tough spot. Well, I'm very glad to meet you. And I just want you to know that my paper is determined to find out about the possibility of this hoof and mouth disease being brought into the United States. And I intend to uncover the facts, no matter who it hurts. That's very laudable, Miss Marge. But with the fence and border patrol, I can't see how the disease could possibly be brought in from Mexico. We all know that in 1946, by mutual agreement between the two governments, an embargo was put on cattle to stop the spread of hoof and mouth disease. And since then, no Mexican cattle have entered the United States. There is talk of lifting this embargo, which would allow the Mexican cattleman to sell his herds on this side. But should that ever happen, they will all be inspected and a duty imposed so as not to undersell the American rancher. But, Colonel, uh, other animals besides cattle can carry hoof and mouth disease. That's very true. But our department is always on the job. Anytime any predatory animals are caught coming over, the animal is destroyed and burned. I represent an organization that has 5,000 head of choice steers that could get infected. 
And the government wouldn't waste any time in killing that whole herd and putting us all out of business. That's right. But if that should ever happen, the government would reimburse the ranchers at the market price. Yes, and it would take years to restock that ranch. If that disease was to ever spread, it would mean the end of every cattleman along the fence. Well, that's why I'm assigning Roy Rogers to the Brasco Patrol. He's our ace troubleshooter. Well, gentlemen, I guess this ends our meeting. And you can be assured that I will do everything in my power to see that we get that protection for everyone. Good day. Thank you. Miss Marsh. That's a pretty big problem to just send one man, Colonel. Well, tell you, and then it's your right. responsibility. But just remember, the Rancher's Journal is going to get action if you don't. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Rogers is here now. I had him wait in the other office. Well, tell him to come in, and that will be all. The Colonel will see you now, Mr. Rogers. Pardon me. Good morning, sir. Oh, excuse me. And so, Rogers, I realize we haven't got enough men to watch every foot of that fence 24 hours a day. But you go down to Brasco and assure those ranchers that nothing is coming across that border. And if you can't do it, I'll send down someone who will. But, Colonel, I can't see why the ranchers are so worried. Oh, excuse me. I'm so clumsy. <laughs> there certainly isn't a chance of any cattle getting through that fence. Well, maybe not. But as they said, wild animals can carry the disease, too. Well, that's true. But we've got a bunch of good men down there, and I'm sure they're capable of tracking down any wild bear or mountain lion. I don't care if you have to track down every lizard, every iguana, every... Every Gila monster. <laughs> oh, look, Roy. I'm getting pressure from all sides. The newspapers and my superiors, as well as the ranchers. Now, you heard what I said just three weeks. Or I'm going to get a new troubleshooter. Yes, sir. I'll see you later. Oh, no, you don't. That's your cover, partner. Well, don't shoot, mister. I've got a horse and a dog to support. <laughs> Say, those are the finest looking cap pistols I've ever seen. Work good, too. And that suit. Think it fits all right, Roy? Just like it was made for you. Sure do hope Dad likes it. We're going to see him in a little while. Come on. Stay with Jim. I'll find the freight office and see if our horses are here. Miss Marsh? Oh, yes, you must be Miss Madeira. Hello. Hello. A million welcomes from the bulletin. We have a desk all ready for you. Oh, thank you. I'm ready to get to work. Uh, uh, hold it for a picture, Miss Marsh. We'll use the city as a background, right? Yes, it isn't often that we get a famous newspaper woman all the way. We out here in the sticks. That's right. <laughs> Oh, no, not that way, Miss Marsh. For a newspaper woman, you certainly don't know how to pose. Just because we're out in the sticks doesn't mean we don't know how to do things in a big way, you know. Oh. I want this a real natural pose. Now, uh, a little bend a little more, please. Uh, relax now. Now, the light's in the lens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Give me that. Here, Miss Marsh. You just take the picture. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Come on, Miss Marsh. Hey, boss, we're in that picture. That's published in the paper. The cops will be looking for you again, Tony. You're not kidding. I'm going to break that plate. Hey, that's what do you think you're pushing around, big boy. I demand you apologize. I apologize. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes, though. Hey! We all prepare for you and everything. I hope you like it. This is a very nice place, you know. Oh, yes. Very quiet and peaceful. Nothing ever happens around here. I see what you mean. 
Well, sometimes. <laughs> Nothing but a little kiss will make it better. I wasn't talking to you. Claire, tan tonto como eres. Si no fueras tan estúpido, todo pasaría bien. Estúpido. He loved me. Pero te has fijado qué hombre tan tonto. Well, I guess so. Say, I I I'm awfully sorry for what happened. You were only trying to help me. I don't know what's the matter with her. Women. There shouldn't be any women in this world. Just fathers and children. <laughs> That's all right. Say, I shipped a couple of horses and the dog here. Have they arrived yet? Yeah, the entrance to the freight office is in the back. I'll be back to pick them up in a little while. Hi, Roy. You forgot some all that Jim bought me an ice cream cone. Can I bite? <laughs> no, thanks, Pancho. You can take off now. Our horses are here. Oh. Thanks. Look at our beautiful camera. A oh, hundred and sixty dollars second hand. The plate's broken. The camera's broken. Everything. And to think that this should happen to you. <laughs> and now I can see your heart is broken. And I can understand it. <laughs> Just lay your head on my shoulder and let the tears out. Who can blame you for crying when all is lost? Everything. <laughs> I can't squeeze out another tear. Why, you, I'll... No, 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 not that again. Please, no, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. <laughs> oh. Listen, I've got a really hot story. Border patrolman gets ultimatum. Colonel Wells of the Bureau of Animal Industry yesterday gave Roy Rogers of the Border Patrol Three weeks to stop the increasing threat of hoof and mouth disease getting into the United States. Colonel Wells admitted that he hasn't enough men to watch the border 24 hours a day, and the cattlemen along the border are in a state of... Look, this is only the beginning of the story, not the tail end. <laughs> that does it. Look, do you mind if I move the horse? No, go right ahead. Easy bullet. She's not going to steal Trigger. Hi, Trigger. Hey, there's that fresh guy that broke our camera. Pancho, take Trigger and your mule out and saddle him up, will you? Sure, Roy. Right. Where'd you get that story? Well, I don't see that that's any of your business. Well, it happens to be I'm Roy Rogers. Oh, so you're Roy Rogers. Well, that's just fine. I'll just add a little more to my story. Instead of giving adequate protection, Roy Rogers, ace troubleshooter for the Border Patrol, was found today engaged in a common street brawl. How do you like that, Mr. Rogers? Don't you realize how much harm a story like that can cause? It can make all the ranchers lose confidence in the Border Patrol and... Look, I'm a newspaper woman. It's my job to print the news as I see it. And I'll thank you to call that dog off. Well, you see, ma'am, he doesn't like people who go around snooping in private offices. Do you, Bullet? <laughs> no, wait a minute. No. You see, we believe that anyone getting news by snooping is the same as stealing. And we don't like people who steal, do we, Bullet? Now, now, wait a minute. No! Listen, you get that dog out of here. Oh. Don't worry, Alina. I'll do something about it right now. Oh, Pinky, you're so brave. What are you going to do? I'm closing this door. Hey! Honest, I won't. Please call him off. Hey, you certainly have a way with the ladies. It's amazing the way you made her change her mind. I'm sorry we frightened you, but I'll make it up to you in a couple of days with the real story for not printing this. And thanks. You're welcome. Come on, Bullet. Gee, it's too bad you have to kill a story like that. Are you kidding? Hi, Roy. Hi, Roy. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. We were expecting you. 
Boy, we've had nothing but trouble around here. That's All right. right. Rough. Where's Lopez? Lopez? Nobody by that name come in here. Them no one here. Like that. Well, don't you worry. Your dad will be alone in a little while. Oh, by the way, fellas, this is Pancho. Howdy. Hi. Hi, fellas. You're just in time for chow. Well, good. Daryl, show him where he's to bunk and see that he gets a good meal. Sure will, Roy. Take Bullet with you. Hey, Bullet. Say, Pat, I'm really worried about Lopez. Who is he, Roy? He's one of the top Mexican border patrolmen assigned to this post to help straighten out the trouble. Well, when did you expect him? Well, he was riding here by horseback, but he should have been here by now. That was a pretty bad sandstorm we had. I've been thinking about that. We better ride out along the fence and see if we can't pick up a trace of him. Okay. Capital City. Yeah, plenty. They're sending in their top investigator to make sure that nothing gets through the border fence. I made some inquiries about this Rogers, and I find he really knows his stuff. He's considered an expert tracker, and he's got a dog trained to follow a trail, too. This would have to happen right when we've got another big herd to run through. Well, it'll take Rogers a little time to get organized. Why not run the whole bunch across, make one big killing, and lay low for a while? Sure, that's a good idea. We need a windstorm. If it happened today, it'd be okay. But if it takes a week, it'd give Rogers plenty of time to snoop. Yeah, you're right, Lucky. Tony, take a couple of boys and go out there and get that patrolman's body. Take it out someplace and bury it where nobody will find it. If the sands didn't completely cover it, the buzzers won't lose any time. Rogers won't lose any time either. We'd be out of business. I'd better get going. I can have my herd ready to move on a minute's notice. My boys are already on my side. Come on, I'll buy you a drink on that windstorm. Good. Roy! It's the Border Patrol.
it down, Pat. The footing's bad. Holding you for the disappearance of Lopez. Not the disappearance, Roy. The murder. I'm taking you to jail. Take care of the body, Pat. I'm really worried about Lopez. He should have been here by now. Don't you worry. Your daddy will be along in a little while. Well, he was right here, of course. He should have been here by now. He should have been here by now. We're not going to get very much out of him, but I'll have him fingerprinted. We'll find out who he is one way or another. Hey, how'd you get in here? Oh, oh, well, it was easy. I just opened the door and then walked right in. Now I'm walking out again. Well, goodbye. Wait a minute. How much did you hear? You mean about you capturing the bad man and about Mr. Lopez being murdered? I didn't hear anything. Goodbye. Listen, Pinky, it's important that what you heard doesn't get out. Can I trust you? Yes. I wouldn't want any of this to get in the hands of a certain young lady who doesn't know what she should or shouldn't print. Troy, they won't get me to talk. They can hit me. They can beat me. They can claw me. But they won't get one single word out of me. Well, maybe one little word. One word? What's that? Water. 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 No, oh, no, you don't. Listen, we know you've been with Rogers and the sheriff and you're keeping something from us. Now, what is it? No, I won't talk. You can't make me talk. No matter what you do to me, I won't talk. You better tell us or else. No, no. You can hit me, you can beat me, you can kill me. But you'll be sorry. And after I'm dead, you'll bring flowers to me. But I'll be so mad I won't even smell them. Pinky, darling. We won't hurt you. We just want to talk some sense to you. You have a pretty good argument. Yes, you? Pinky, darling. When friends are friends, they're friends. And they share like that. So. You got a pretty good argument, too. Pinky, if I was your friend and you wanted to know something, I'd tell you. I like your argument better, but I still won't talk. Sit down. You better talk and talk fast. Here, give me a coin. A coin? OK, here's a coin. Had you do it. Tell I do it. No, no. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll talk. There. And there's one other thing I'd like to tell you. I'm ashamed of myself. Very interesting. Very interesting. Mr. Rogers, I have a very interesting item for you to read in the newspaper. Your last item was very interesting. That's why I'm here. Oh, I suppose you came to tell me the story of a certain murder. So you got Pinky to talk. They forced me, Roy, till I squealed. But you can't print that news. Oh, can't I? You just wait till you read it. And incidentally, it looks pretty strange to me that you'd try to hush up a murder. I'd say it looked downright suspicious. Look, I'm going to give it to you straight. Lopez was one of my best friends. He's dead now, and there's nothing I can do for him. But there's one thing you can do. And just what is that? That's to keep the headlines in your journal from getting to his little boy. But withholding the news is against the law. Especially when the news is murder. I realize all that. But all I want is enough time to figure out a way to tell his little boy before your paper does. I guess the headlines can wait. Thanks. Roy. Maybe I could be of some help. Where's the boy's mother? He doesn't have one. Oh. Then why don't you let me tell him? Well, that's kind of you. Where is he? Out at camp. I'll get my coat. When the twilight steals across the prairie And the purple shadows linger too Then the time draws near The sandman will appear Bringing sleep to each small buckaroo Close your eyes Close your eyes Little one Little one It's time you hit Slumber trail. Rain 
Ranger still. Ranger still. Stars aglow. Stars aglow. Just hear that lonesome doggie's wail. Pack your dreams. Pack your dreams. Time to go. Time to go. Ahead and down the slumber trail. Somewhere. Tell the boys? No. Well, his dad isn't going to show up. He's dead. We found his body out at the sand dunes. He's been murdered. We came here to break the news to him, but... I, I just haven't the heart to wake him out of a sound sleep and tell him now. We'll figure out some way to break the news to him in the morning. I'll ride back to town with you. Murdered. Are you awake? I dream Dad was dead. I dream he was killed. We gotta go out and look for him, Bullet. We gotta find Dad. Hi, boss. Been waiting for you guys. Where's Tony? The sheriff's got him in jail. In jail? And Ben? Well, he's dead. What happened? We had Lopez's body all wrapped up when Rogers and another one of those Border Patrol guys jumped us. That puts us in a fine mess. Tony in jail, he's wanted in a half a dozen states. As soon as the cops and the FBI find out about this, they'll make him spill everything he knows. And then they'll come running right after us. After I got away, I followed him into town to see if I could spring Tony. But Rogers had too many guys for me. Got to get him out. That's all to it. I better see Sloan tonight, even if I have to cross that border. If you go over the fence of the canyon, you can take my horse. I had to leave him there. Yeah. What's your name? Pancho Lopez, and my father's a border patrolman. Lopez? Hey, you make quite a patrolman yourself. Hey, you riding alone? Yes. I had to bring something happened to Dad, and I'm looking for him now. Ah, oh, don't you pay any attention to dreams, kid. I saw your dad only yesterday. He told me he was going to visit a friend of mine. If you put that six-shooter away, I'll let you ride along with me. Sure. Come on, Bullet. You know, it's lucky I ran into you. Come on. 
Ain't lucky. It's so important to bring you across the border. I want to talk to you. It's about Tony. Who's the kid? Oh, I want you to meet Pancho Lopez. Lopez? Lopez. His father said he was riding by. He's still here, ain't he? Why, well, he's... Uh... He's still here, ain't he? Sure, he's up in the bunkhouse. Dad! Come on, Bullet! Hey, Joe. Keep an eye on him. Lopez, kid, what'd you bring him here for? I had to. He caught me crossing the border. It's a break. They don't call me lucky for nothing. He's gonna be the ticket to get Tony out of jail. Come on. Let's go write that sheriff a nice little note. Pat, this is Roy. Is Pancho there? What? Are you sure? All right, thanks. Pancho and Bullard are gone. They've been missing for quite some time. Then the men who sent this note have got them, all right. Well, when you're faced with the alternative of having little Pancho killed or turning this man loose, there's just one thing you can do. Yes, you've got to let that man out, right now. We can't. It's against the law to let a guilty man go because of threats of another criminal. That's right. You mean to say you're just gonna sit there and let that little boy be murdered in cold blood? No, we're gonna find him. Pinky, you ought to know him. Yeah, that's him. I knew I saw that fellow before. He's the guy that broke the camera the other day when I took the picture. You're right. There must have been something on that picture he didn't want printed in the paper. A good enough reason to break your camera. What'd you do with the plate? He threw it out in a corner with the rest of his junk. Well, I didn't think it was any good. We'll get it and find out. Sure, if that's an awfully long shot Roy's taking, you've just got to let this man out. I can't do it, ladies. I'd like to, but I just can't. Sheriff, I'd hate to think I let a little boy be killed just on account of a technicality. Yes, my conscience wouldn't let me eat or, or sleep. Would you? Well, speaking about eating, I haven't had very much all day except a late breakfast. Dinner was only fair. Supper wasn't anything to brag about. I guess I better go get me a snack to keep up my strength. Give it to me. Give it to me. What are we doing? Oh, hurry. Listen, I know you heard what your friend wrote in that note. Yes, ma'am. I tried not to listen, but I couldn't help hearing. Say, if we let you go, be sure to send Pancho back, will you? We can depend on you, can't we? Sure, ladies. We don't fight kids and women, especially pretty ones. Let him go. Just a moment. Letting you go is a big responsibility. How soon will Pancho be back? By morning, sure, ladies. I, I give you my word. Hey, what? You dirty double-crosser! You croup, bandido! Venga, cabra la puerta! Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. There's Kathy, and there's, there's that guy, Tony, the guy that you put in jail. Well, who's this fellow on this side? Oh, him? Oh, he's a nice fellow. That's Mr. Sloan. He owns a ranch near here. Well, if he's such a nice fella, why is he so friendly with Tony? I don't know. We better go out there and have a talk with Mr. Sloan. Okay. Here, take the picture. Picked up a little. The last few minutes, too. Yeah. If it keeps up, it'll give us a chance to run that last herd. Mm -hmm. I'll get down at the border, get him ready to cross. You get the trucks ready. Ah, uh, what about Tony? After they get that note, I got a hunch they'll let him go. They think they got a chance of getting that kid back. If he gets here before you leave, bring him along. We need every man we can get. We'll run this last big herd and make enough dough to lay low for a long time. What am I going to do with him? I have no intentions of letting him go. I tell you, you go ahead. After I get the trucks rolling, I'll take care of everything. See you at the border.
right, fellas, let's go. You two stick around. I got a little job to do, and I may need your help. Come on, bring it up in there. <laughs> fell in the picture with you. I, uh, I don't know the man at all. I remember he stopped and asked me for a match. <laughs> That's about all I can tell you, Rogers. <laughs> Exactly what happened. Mr. Bradford, that brought me here. He's gone under the water for another big herd. They'll rustle him in the sandstorm. Pinky, if what? they get that herd over, every rancher around here will be ruined. We've got to get to the border and stop them. Where's your mule? They put him in the barn. All right, now listen. Get your mule, take Bullet with you, and ride to the camp as fast as you can and get the riders. Tell them to meet us at the dunes. They'll probably bring the cattle across the same place your father was killed. I'm sorry, Pancho. I didn't want that to slip out. That's all right, Roy. I heard him talking about Dad. But we'll get even for him. We'll pay him back. You bet we will. Stay with him, Bullet. Come on, Pinky. <laughs> for help. You two take off and try to stop Rogers. I'll cool off the kid.
do this, kid. This is it. Smokes, the boys are riding the fence. We'll pick them up on the way. City in a new assignment. I just want to thank you for the biggest scoop my newspaper has had in years. Would you mind doing me just one more favor? Anything, Roy. Well, I've made arrangements to send Poncho to school, and I'd like to see that he gets there safely. And you be sure and study your lesson. Don't worry, Roy. I will. 
Because I want to be a good patrolman like my dad was. Hold still, everybody. This will be a flash picture. <laughs> Come on, Pinky. Hurry up. Roy is leaving here. I help you. Why, Pinky? I, 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 I'm sorry, but every time you come near me, the beast comes out in me. Well, Pinky, you, if you want to kiss, you don't have to steal it. Bye.